In this video, we're going to talk about relations and functions. So we'll start by talking about relations. So a relation, so all a relation is, is a set of ordered pairs. So is a set of ordered pairs, ordered pairs. Let's look at some examples of relations so you see how simple it really is. So we have a set, so we do have to use the set notation. And let's say we have the ordered pairs 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 6. So I just made these numbers up. And this is a relation. That's all it is, is it's a set of ordered pairs. Really, really simple. Um, the set of first components is called the domain. So the domain in this case would be the set containing 1, 3, 5. So the domain, this is the set of first components. Set of first components. So it's the x's, right? You can think of these as x comma y's, right? And then the range is the set of second components. So in this case, the range would be 2, 4, 6. So 2, 4, 6. That would be the range. Okay, and this is the set of second components. Set of second components. So recap, a relation is simply a set of ordered pairs. Uh, the set of first components is called the domain. So here's the domain. And that's 1, 3, 5. And the set of second components is called the range, so that's 2, 4, 6. So functions are special types of relations. Okay, there are special, special types of relations. So a function, okay, a function, so a function is a relation. So is a relation, okay, so it's actually a relation in which each now, the, the first components, uh, or th rather the numbers in the domain, they're called elements, okay? So in which each element in the domain, so each x value, right, each x value corresponds, corresponds to exactly one element in the range. So each x has to go to only one y value, right? Every single x has to go to only one y value. Let's look at some examples. So say we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9. Okay, and then say we also have another relation, say 1, 2, 1, 6, 7, 4. So both of these are relations. They're both uh, sets of ordered pairs, right? So um, the domain here is 1, 3, 8, and the range is 2, 4, 9. Pretty easy. And the first relation, this is a function. And the reason it's a function is because each x goes to only one y. So for example, 1 goes to 2, and there's no other 1s. So it doesn't go anywhere else. 3 goes to 4. And there's no other threes, so it doesn't go anywhere else. Eight goes to nine, and there's no other eights, so it doesn't go anywhere else. So yes, it's a function. You might say, okay, so basically, whenever all the x's are different, it's a function. Pretty much yes. So here, one goes to two, but then one also goes to six. Fail! So this is not a function, not a function. Because you have the same number, you have the number one going to two different y values. It goes to two and it goes to 6. So basically, if the x repeats, um, it's not a function. Now, you could easily come up with an example where that's not true. For example, you could do something silly like this. 1, 4, 1, 4, <laughs> 2, 3. This is a function, right? This is a function. This is a function. You might say, well, the, the x is repeated. Yeah, 1 goes to 4, but oh, look, 1 goes to 4. So it's repeated, so we're saying the same thing twice. So typically, people don't do stuff like this because it's silly. So. Generally, if you have different x's, they're going to be going, if you have the same x, it's going to be going to a different y. So if you have the same x going to two different y's, uh, it's not a function. Okay, let's talk a little bit 
about um, determining if, if y is a function of x. So sometimes we have questions like this. Is y a function of x? So let's do a couple examples. Uh, let's say y equals 3x plus 4. It's just a yes or no question. So we'll say that y is a function of x if given a number for x, each x has to correspond to one y value. So how do you figure this out? Well, you can just look at it and the answer is yes. How do I know that? Well, no matter what number we plug in here, we're going to get three times that number plus four. So we're going to get a single number. For example, I'm just going to make one up. x equals one. If I plug in one, I get three times one plus four. So I get seven. So that's one number, right? So no matter what number I plug in, I get one y value. So the answer is yes. Here's another one. Um, x plus 2y equals 6. x plus 2y equals 6. Same thing. The answer is also yes. And again, I can just plug in a number for x like 1. You can always use 1. Then you can solve this for y, and you get y equals some stuff. But you get one number, so the answer is yes. So when is it no? Well, it'll be no if you see something like this. Uh, y squared equals x. Aha. So in this case, if you plug in a number like, say, x equals 1, you would get y squared equals 1. And when you take the square root and you try to solve for y, you do get a plus or minus. So when x is 1, we get two y values. So the answer is no. So generally, the answer will always be yes, unless you have like y to an even power. Or you could have something like this, absolute value of y equals x. Say again, in this case, x is 1. So then the absolute value of y is equal to 1. Well, what happens there? You get a plus or minus again. So in this case, the answer is no. So pretty much for everything we're going to be doing, um, it's always going to be yes unless you have like a y to an even power or an absolute value of y. For example, say we have x squared plus y cubed equals 7. In this case, you could solve for y and you get one answer, right? Like you could subtract x squared. So you would get y cubed equals 7 minus x squared. And then to solve for y here, you would simply take the cube root. So you would do cube root, cube root. So you'd get y equals cube root 7 minus x squared. So in this case, you get one y value, right? So the answer is also yes. So generally, it's always yes unless you see like y to an even power. Let's do a couple more. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. I'm going to write three more examples down just to make sure you got this, and we're going to do it. Let's see, x squared plus y squared equals 6. x minus absolute value of y equals 8. x to the fourth plus y to the fifth equals 9. Let's see if we can do all of these without doing any work. So in this case here, we have y to an even power. So when we solve for y, we're going to get two y values possibly. So the answer is no. In this case, we have an absolute value of y. So if we solve for y, we get two y values. So the answer is no. In this case, we have an odd power of y. So when you have an odd power of y and you solve for y, you're going to get one y value. So the answer is yes. One more. What if it was x cubed minus y plus 7 equals 0? In this case, it's easy to solve for y and you get one y value. So the answer is yes. So again, it's always going to be yes, pretty much, unless you have y to an even power or an absolute value of y. All right, let's spend some time talking now about function notation. I know it's a lot of information and we're going kind of fast, but we're covering a lot of math. So function notation, this stuff is super important. So function notation. So I remember when I first learned this, uh, I didn't understand it. So if you write f of x, this is red f of x. That's how you read it, okay? That's how you read it. And x here, this is the input, okay? That's what you plug in. x comes from the domain, so this lives in the domain. That's, that's what people say, so it's from the domain. From the domain, it's your input. And then f of x, f of x, this is your output, okay? This is your output. And your output, well, it lives in the range. So it's from the range, OK? So f of x is read f of x. But you don't say of again. It's not f of x of. <laughs> no one talks like that. 
uh, for some reason. I don't know why, but it's just f of x. x is the input. It's from the domain. Uh, f of x is the output. It's from the range. And so we decide we set y equal to f of x, okay? So y is in the range. So the, you might say, well, why is y equal to f of x? Because we say it is, right? Because we say it is. Um, just a quick side note here. Say you had f of 2 equals 3. How would you, how would you graph this, right? This is not really the, the point of this video, but let's, let's talk about it really, really briefly. So this means you're graphing the ordered pair Okay, this means you're graphing the ordered pair at 2 comma 3, okay? Because x is your 2 and then y is your 3, right? So you would go right to and up 3 and put a dot. And let's overcomplicate it. So we can think of this as 2 comma 3. We can also think of this as 2 comma f of 2. You might say, what? Yeah, because f of 2 is equal to 3, right? So every single point on a graph here is x y or x f of x same thing it's important to understand that you can represent it both ways this is so important for higher level math uh, this graphical understanding of functions so x is your input y is your output your output value is f of x so why is it better to use this instead of this well this this is more descriptive right f of 2 is the y value at 2 if i just say 3 well it might not be clear Let's do some simple examples of evaluating functions now. So just maybe one example. So here we go. Say f of x equals just a really easy one, 3x plus 2. This is a straight line. It's in the form mx plus b, right? So m is your slope, and 2 is your y-intercept, right? You can think of it like that, OK? Let's just plug in like 3. So if you plug in 3, what you do, what this means is you're evaluating f at 3. So we're replacing all of the x's with 3's. So it'd be 3, that's a 3 there, and then times 3 plus 2. So you get 9 plus 2, so 11. How about f of negative 4? Same thing in this case. We're evaluating f at negative 4. That's, that's how we say it. And you basically replace all of the x's with negative 4's. So it's 3 times negative 4 plus 2. This is negative 12 plus 2. So this is negative 10. One more. Let's look at f of negative x. In this case, uh, let's see. We're replacing all of the x's with negative x's. So it's 3 times negative x plus 2. So that's just going to be negative 3x plus 2. So that's how you evaluate functions. Um, I hope this video made sense. I probably should stop it now. It's reaching 13 minutes. So that's it.